I've just got back from the regional weekend. I'm tired and I just want to go to bed. But fuck it, let's just do another video. Hello Yugi nerds, this is Darren Stevenson back with another video and today I want to talk about the potential 5 decks that could steal the 200th YCS this weekend. In no particular order, I just want to start off with the elephant in the room that should have probably been hit on the panel list. The decks that can utilize Firewall Dragon the best, probably in my opinion, is, the best one is probably still Goki. Uh, even though it is Lost Goblin, which is a really good, really big hit and also Invoker, Goki is still ridiculous. It can do like really really ridiculous combos still despite not having goblin in the game or invoker because invoker was just a starter card so you just lose a lot of your starter cards but the end board still exists you can still do stuff like u-link combo which might not be as strong with since you can target it now now the goblin's gone but you still have been floodgated you need to draw your out still and it puts you on a clock, so when if you can't out it immediately, they will just kill you next turn. Another option is they can just gun blow you, because that card for some reason is still in the game. And if you hand trap them, then yeah, they're just going to gun blow you for four, and then probably end on a try gate too. They're still ridiculous. And being able to just OTK you from out of nowhere makes it really good at going second. The bad part is, now that it's lost a lot of star cards and make an invoker, it's really fragile now. Like, I feel like now that when it gets Ash Blossomed on Azulde, the deck just stops. And that's not good, because it'll just get out tempoed by the other slow decks, and it won't be able to grind up. And it won't be able to grind of it as well as it used to. I'm sure there's a variant out there that can cope. The combo deck is just so good at what it used to do. I believe it could probably do it again. But with the lack of starter cards, it's really weird. But I still think it's a good choice for the YCS. And I wouldn't be surprised if it's still one. Next, another obvious one is Sky Striker. Even with the loss of two drones, uh, the deck is still really good. It's a fair deck. That can one for one with your opponent. But also gain significant advantage with Engage. So if the game goes on for too long, Engage can just get ridiculous. Its utility is also insane. En Engage can just search pretty much anything that you can think of. And it has ridiculous removal. And I feel like Sky Striker can just combat with any deck. Also, Hiate makes going second significantly better. Only having three Engage is really sucked. But Hiate turns your Ray, Rotor, and Drones into Engages just by attacking directly. And then you just combo off main phase two. Well, combo off. And then just set yourself up with multi roll to the point where they just can't come back. The down though is like I say, they don't have that many engine cards. What, they have like 8? And I just don't really feel like 8 starter cards is reliable at all. Granted, those engine cards and starter cards are really good. Is it reliable enough for an 11 round event this weekend? When you can just as easily brick and just lose. And there's nothing you can do about that. The next deck is... Trickstar. Now, this deck not getting hit I think is crazy. Because a card like Reincarnation being at 3 and drawing Lockbird being at 3, what the fuck? The fact that it can still draw Rein you is just stupid. A card like Drawl probably shouldn't be in the game. A lingering effect that means you can't add can catch you in really awkward spots to the point where you just have to pass depending on your hand. Trickstar is also very adaptable. If it needs to uh, have more engine cards, it can play the Sky Striker engine and it can apply more pressure and and play a ridiculous card like Engage. Or if there's uh, more combo decks in the format, it can go down the route of Floodgate them with Gozen and Rivalry. And also they can play pretty much any hand trap in the game. And what's really good about, about Trickstar is Sky Striker can't be as aggressive. So Trickstar being aggressive early on can really just add the tempo early to the point where they took too much damage that Sky Striker can't recover. And then Trickstar can just kill you the following turn. However, its ceiling is like, I'm taller than its ceiling. It sucks, it's terrible. It can't out monsters that are bigger than Candina, barely. And it's lost goblins, so it can't really do the firewall OTK if your opponent just leaves a monster on field. Or at least turn one anyway. You can probably still firewall OTK with like setup. That doesn't really make it as much of a danger as it was last format. And again, just being able to like look at a 2-8 vanilla and stress about outing it. But since it's so adaptable, I can I can still see it taking the event this weekend. Next up, we have all the guys. It didn't get hurt in the list, which I think is fair. It's a deck that I don't think has really done anything, but it's a deck that could be a really good counter depending on what the meta is. If the meta is predominantly Sky Striker, this deck can main Secret Village, uh, no problem at all, and then Sky Striker can just auto lose to that. If Sky Striker isn't the most represented deck, it can easily just main stuff like Rivalry of the Warlords and stuff like that, and that's just a pretty hard counter to stuff like Goki. 
And Multifig is just a pretty good card in itself that can apply pressure and be really aggressive just to end the game really quickly. So you're not just being slow and just one for one with your opponent until they've got no cards left. You can just apply pressure and kill them. The disadvantage though is this card doesn't really have that many engine cards either. You ideally need to open Seek or Multifig that actually have a play. Marionetta isn't a real engine card, so you just summon it and set a card, but you don't really get your engine going, you just have like a defensive card. And not only that, if Trickstar is popular, Ice Stage can just be really awkward for the deck because it forces you to preemptively flip cards and it baits your back row. That could be the difference between you winning and losing the game. And lastly, Draco! Yeah! Now this deck not getting hit, I think is just ridiculous. I honestly thought Diagram was getting banned when it didn't get printed in the Megatins, but the fact that it's still at free, and yeah, it lost to Terraforming, but some people didn't even play free Terraforming anyway to play around Droll. It's just dumb. It can play every Floodgate in the game, so it's very adaptable. It can just Floodgate whatever deck is relevant. The fact that it plays cards like Card of Demise that you can just lose to, and you, when you grind with them, you eventually out that Floodgate, and then you're like, okay, I can't deal enough damage, but they're top decking, so whatever. And then they literally top deck, oh, hello, I draw three cards. Floodgate, 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 or Floodgate Diagram Engine card, then they, you win with that one Floodgate. Floodgate and it's just, uh, that can very well happen. It could be somebody's day. Play Draco, Floodgate, everyone all of them rounds on top cut, then it's your day. Whatever. You just in. Wait, chicken, what's that? There's another deck I haven't mentioned. We've got a six special deck. So the six deck, got you, no top five. Daza can't count, Mech Knight Invoked. Now Mech Knight Invoked is really interesting. The Mech Knights can take advantage of people who just derp with their columns and generate a lot of card advantage and can apply a lot of pressure because they're big guys that can be really aggressive. And a lot of time you just can't play around having two things in the column with the extra deck. Especially with Sky Striker if they need to set five or whatever and they've got a Kagari there. Or people are just stupid and just summon a Octo Stretch in the same column as an Azolde. You can also splash the Mech Knight Invoked engine with Sky Striker just to Add more engine cards. Uh, and engage can be pretty unfair in that deck as well, considering you play a load of spells in there, like Invocation, Terraforming, Meltdown, and stuff like that. And Alistair being a one-card play, can it just it's just really good in general. Like, one cards that are just one-card plays to give you turn something is good, because it means you're not going to lose immediately. You might still lose because you can only end a mech of a pass, but at least it's something. And the fact that you can make Pippi Tree on just... <laughs> through a board that's ridiculous the, the, the problem with it is you don't have any engine light sky striker could like go into like a light kagari or something then that'll be so good you can just end on you can use the sky striker engine to get your light and then you can end on a mecha bit and that can apply a lot of the pressure of all the hand traps that you're probably playing but the fact that you have to hope your opponent has a light in their grave or you hard draw one of your light hand traps like ghost ogre or mech knights it just seems really stressful and it feels like a lot has to go right in that deck where you have to draw a blend of your engine card you're also also forced to go second as well. Going second isn't necessarily bad, but if you take the risk and go second and you don't draw any hand traps against a combo deck, you can really suffer. And also, if you do have a hand trap and it's not enough, your whole hand's gonna get gumblawed away and then you're just gonna die. And that's it, those are the six, not five, decks that I think could potentially take the YCS this weekend. Be sure to leave the deck of your choice in the comments section below and don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. See you guys later.